Thank you. Thank you, Jalen. Is I'll go play sometime. <laughs> right now, Jalen's uh, the leading rusher in college football for a rush. He's also averaging fourteen point four yards of play. He's off to a pretty good start for you, isn't he? I mean, you just statistically, it just looks like he's off the charts. Yeah, he's cocksure of not. He's he's doing well. Um, you know, three games into it, uh, making some good decisions, making some explosive plays. Just still. Still a long, long ways to go. A lot to grow on. He, he, he sees that. I see that. We all see that. And, and uh, you know, production's there. But again, the, the competition changes. The things evolve. Things don't stay the same in this game. And you either get better or or or, uh, or people beat you. One of the two. And uh, so he's got to keep getting better, as do we. Is it fundamentals? Is it technique? Uh, you know, or no, it's a little bit of everything. I mean, it's just a growth process. I mean, it's. He's seeing, you know, this offense into to different looks. You know, seeing how we, you know, how we game plan each week, getting a feel for the game, our receivers, our O line, getting in sync with everybody, decision making, play calls, why we call things, why we don't. Um, so he's just, you know, it's 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 new and it's not. And uh, but he's he's handling it well. He's just he's there's a lot of progress that's got to be made just across the board. You got. Lee Morris back involved on Saturday. Grant Calcaterra had some catches. Just, as an offense, do you are you constantly looking at okay, you know, who needs to be more involved? Or is it because the defense is taking you know this away? I mean, how do you 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 only got one ball to go around? How do you kind of manage that? Yeah, sometimes it's just on how many snaps you get. We've you know we've had some explosive plays, so it's limited the snaps a little bit. And uh, kind of like last year, you know, in a way, in that sense. Um, Probably the only time you'll hear me compare a year to another year, but uh, um, so at least it's kind of been that way at this point. So uh, not really. I mean, if we've got an outstanding player that's that's you know maybe not gotten enough, then we may you know try to force feed them some. But more often than not, we just you know we call the plays that we like, and sometimes a guy that you think might catch it catches it, and then we had a couple the other night that were not at all who we expected to catch it that caught it, and that's just the way it goes. And so. Uh, the key is having depth where it stays competitive and multiple guys can make plays and and we're you know we're developing that. Mayfield was uh, uh, great at keeping his eyes downfield, subtle movements to extend plays, and it looked like Hertz did exactly that on the one throw to Rambo. It, 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 did he get here with a more sophisticated passing game than you expected, or has it is it a work in progress right now even? Well, he, I mean, he understands football. I mean, I guess what I'm saying, Lincoln, some guys get back there and get pressured, they freak out. Yeah. And some guys keep their eyes in place and do what they got to do to keep the play going. Yeah, I mean, I think there's some sense of, of just calmness under fire and courage a little bit there. And then I think also uh, you get down in those moments to how much do you really trust what you're doing, you know, when that pocket starts to close down or, you know, you feel a little bit of pressure. Do you, do you trust your receivers to be open in the spot and trust that, you know, this guy's going to be there when he's supposed to, or do you do you nod and get out early? And so I, I think there's something mental to it, but also just a trust factor. And, and uh, yeah, Jalen's growing. You know, he's 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 had a good feel for you know when to leave, and the majority of times he's left, it's turned into explosive plays. And then he's also had several like the one you mentioned, where where he hung in there and and uh, and delivered great throws. So trust level's getting higher, and I think the more he does that, the more comfortable he'll be sitting in there. Lincoln, given the, the risk of you know, quarterback running that, that comes with it, is it ideal for your quarterback to be your leading rusher in this offense, or does that matter to you? Um, you know, I think we just see how it plays out. It's such a small sample size right now, you know, and he's had, you know, just a you know several sc- just straight up scrambles, you know, that weren't quarterback runs that have gone. I mean, first play of the game, and then that goes fifty something yards, and so I mean that's. Uh, that's part of it, and then the other part is we've been able to play a bunch of backs. You know, those guys have not had had to carry the ball 25 times a piece, and not yet. And so, those guys are all rushing the ball pretty well. Um, but no, I mean you don't you don't want a quarterback to 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 beat your guy at the end of the season. I, I doubt he will be for us. Uh, you know, we've got some pretty good backs, and we're going to need those as we get into the get into Big 12 and and uh, the later part of the season. Because of the way that's played out. Do you feel like your backs are maybe fresher than they have been uh, early they, in the season? They are fresh. I don't know it's been as much of Jalen's running, but just we've had, you know, three guys here so far that, that uh, you know, that have been able to carry it and carry it well, and they, they know our offense, and we're able to use those guys interchangeably. And, you know, that's not going to happen. I mean, we're going to have games where 
all those guys have a lot more than seven or eight carries they've been getting. That's you know that's coming, and so. Uh, but no doubt, it, it certainly helps us. You know that that was a position last year that, at times, we were hanging by a thread. I mean, there was times we we're sitting there like, man, one more guy gets hurt, I we may have to play an empty the whole game. You know, and then and, I mean, some real conversations about that. I mean, I remember the Kansas game, Trey's out, and all of a sudden Kennedy's nicked up. I'm like, we don't got anybody left, and uh, so. We've recruited hard and developed hard, and it's uh, it's good to have some bodies in there now. Lincoln, it seems like you guys kind of know your order there at running back, um, but after watching all three of them, how how close are those three when you add Ramondre into the mix? Yeah, well, we don't we don't really know an order, have an order. I mean, that's kind of how the carries have been divvied up. So you know, I still think that you know the the sermon and, and Brooks are probably still one A and one B, but Ramondre certainly gotten better, and and we'll get TJ Pledger back here pretty soon, and and he'll be you know he was playing extremely well uh, before he was injured, and so uh, I feel like we're going to have four pretty good players in that room. So uh, um, yeah, no, it's there's there's advantages to all of them right now. There's kind of an excitement when you get any of those three guys an opportunity. You watch the film. How how, how did the defensive line play? Uh, active, active, uh, more more violent. Um, thought we finished more plays in the backfield. I thought we were pretty gap sound from a defensive lineman standpoint. A couple of times, uh, linebackers got out of gaps a couple of times on a couple of the big runs. But I, uh, uh, we played we played pretty stout up front. I mean, really, it was a strong game for our linebackers, especially you know some of the other guys not named Kenneth Murray. You know, it was I thought Deshaun White. Uh, you know, Ryan Jones did some really good things. Um, Osamoa did some good things. Brian Mead did some good things. And so uh, it was good to see those guys play well. And I mean, certainly when your front's playing like that, it makes your job as a linebacker much easier. Was there something that you saw out of Sutherland after that, that first game with the misses that kind of made you want to get him back out there? Yeah. Just the way he reacted? It's I mean, you know, field goals, drop passes, like that whole world to me is there's – there's drops and then there's bad drops, you know, and there's misses and there's bad misses. And the way he hit the ball in the extra points, the way he hit the ball on the first long field goal, which I've told you, told you guys how you know stupid that was on my part. But we, uh, I just, I knew he was hitting it well. He had one, he had one bad kick. And uh, watching the way he's hit it, practice, uh, his body language just, just had every, every bit of confidence. You know, we. Gabe's a heck of a heck of a second option there right now, no doubt about it. We have a lot of confidence if his opportunity comes up, but I, we never thought twice about about changing Callum. He's he's performed well, and and uh, it was great to see him just just nail those two the other night. Coach, you were really excited about the H backs coming into the season. How have you? How would you assess Jeremiah and Braden's performance so far? Yeah, competitive. You know they've been able to play a decent amount of snaps. Um, they're both. You know, it's been a valuable first part of the season for them. I think they've learned a lot about how you got to play the position and all the things we ask that position to do. They've they've both made some explosive plays and they both left a couple plays out there, both in the receiving and blocking game that that we need them to get better at. But there's depth, there's competition. You know, we're able to kind of rotate those guys and keep them fresh. Whereas in the past, it was all Flowers or all Carson Meyer and and. Uh, so it's a it's a little bit better setup right now. So those are two guys you look at and say they need to take some major steps here throughout the year and and and, and become the players that we all think they can. But there's there's been some some positive signs, but also a need for for competition and growth right now. Did you see improvement, a continued improvement on the offensive line as well? Yeah, we we were de we were better. Uh, you know, again we, we produced. Uh, we can play better. We're still. You can still tell at times that we're, you know, we're still young and figuring each other out and figuring the game out. Uh, at times we look like a really damn good offensive line. At times we, we don't still. And uh, so, but certain, certainly improvement. Uh, uh, guys playing steadier, less mistakes. Uh, a couple times on, on a few of the penalties that, that we, we put them in some tough positions. And uh, so, I think they're taking steps, kind of like the H-backs, kind of like everybody else. There's there's positive signs, but there's a lot of growth that's going to have to happen there, and, and uh, you know we would expect nothing less. Nick, how do you use the off week, or how are you approaching the off week this week? Is there a formula or a thought process to it every time you go into it? Yeah, I mean, we've got kind of some base core values of we never refer to it as off week first because that's a misnomer. It's just okay. a it's just a week it's just a week where we don't have a game. Um, there's there's a lot of work to be done and. Uh, so yeah, yeah, we 
I think there's a kind of an initial plan of how we'd like to practice, and obviously we'll involve some recruiting here at the end of the week. But uh, um, and then I think each team's different. You know, this one's unique for us in that it comes so early in the year. You know, so you're not quite as beat up. We've played, you know, we've played a lot of players on all three sides of the ball in these first few games and been able to spread reps out. So we're not as beat up as I can remember in some. So I think it gives us an opportunity to be pretty aggressive with the week. And, uh, you know, it, it's not going to be about freshening them up. It's going to be about, yeah, again, what I've been telling you, it's not lip service. Like we got to get better and we need to get better now. And this week, that's that's goal number one. Is it a week that, you know, a guy like maybe a Barnes or somebody or guys that haven't played very much, uh, you know, is it a week that maybe they, they get a look or, you know? Yeah, I mean, all those guys have been getting looks in practice. We, we get enough reps in practice that even if a guy's not playing a ton of snaps in the game right now, he's getting an opportunity to show that he should be in there. And that's, I mean, that's our deal. We're not just going to play guys to play them, anybody. They've... They've got to produce and give us a reason to put them in the game. Through three games, um, you know, we've seen kind of what Alex has done, substituting and, and generating competition and things on defense. Have you been pretty happy with kind of – you see guys like Jaden Davis starting to come up and Nick Benito, and is that kind of – do you see that kind of coming to fruition in front yeah, of your eyes? That's all part of, of you know, starting to establish the culture that we want defensively. I mean, it was part of the plan all along is to – is to play a lot of guys and to create competition and create depth and create development of your other players. And again, we're not gonna, back to the other point, we're not gonna play a guy just for those reasons. I mean, they have to show us why, but we're not gonna get married to playing a guy 90 snaps in a game. I mean, it's just, we, you know, it's hurt us in the past. I mean, there's just no other way to say it. And so, uh, you know, we're developing it better. And, and with that, you gotta continue to recruit better and have more players that you wanna put in the game. And so, it all goes hand in hand, but it's uh, it's been healthy on that side. I mean, guys know they're going to get an opportunity, even if you're playing behind, uh, you know, a Kenneth Murray right now. I mean, you're going to get an opportunity, and so if, if you think you should be out there, go out there and prove it. I know you don't care probably, but like you know, when we're at the game and we're getting feedback from fans. It freaks them out when Kenneth Murray leaves the game early. <laughs> I mean, is it is that been an adjustment for you? I mean, is there there's a trust level there that you have to have too, isn't there? Yeah, there is, but guys don't. Guys don't make plays till you give them a chance. And if they're showing us, trust me, we're not putting them out there if they're not showing us something behind the scenes that says they're ready. You Lincoln, said that um, better defense is its own reward and a better defensive culture is its own reward. But it also means it's not hanging over the program. You don't get killed with questions about it from us you know, in, in a setting like this. Is that its own dividend to not, <laughs> you know, think, to not uh, weekly have to face that or maybe as an offensive coach, think oh, I've got to overcome this you know, difficult unit for us. Uh, if y'all don't ask me that, you're going to find something else to ask me. So, uh, um, I mean, I don't look at it like that. I mean, I just, you know, that, that's my job to answer for, you know, anything in this program. And so, um, no, I, I, I don't feel that. I mean, I'm, I, I, I'm really excited about where we're headed and the job that Coach Grinch and our staff and our players have done, but I don't, Relief, none of that. No, just because I just I, I don't know. I, I don't feel that. I really don't. I, I I and again, we're you know we're three games in. You know we've uh, we we got to keep it going. I'm excited about the direction. I think we've got we've got a lot of great people in place, and I'm confident about where we're headed. But not not really a sense of relief. No. Also, just defense aside, I don't think you've been surprised in a negative way by anything from your team. You say you need to get better. I I get that. But you know nothing's on fire. Everything's pretty good. Does that make practice easier, meeting rooms easier, the temperature of the program better place? Oh, there's a lot of things on fire. You guys just don't always see <laughs> Are it. Are there really? Oh yeah. There's, there's. Trust me. The day we stop putting out fires is the day we're holding up some trophies. So yeah, there's always fires. Like you said more. that you expected the TJ back soon. Do you have a sense of how soon that will be? Yeah. Uh, um, it's a little open-ended right now, kind of a week-to-week -week deal. Uh, excited to see kind of how he progresses through the bye week. Um, uh, you know, I would say Texas Tech's maybe a long shot, um, but I think we're, we're getting pretty close with him. Lincoln, like a huge week for the Big 12 last week. I talked to Gary Patterson today. Um, he said uh, there's, a, there's a perception or whatever that the Big 12 is not any good. And he said, you know, you guys write this. He's talking about the media. Do you feel that hanging over the league still uh, before last weekend that, that there's some disrespect going on nationally? Uh, you know, I've commented on that some before. I think at times 
with a, a, a couple of the major networks and people out there, there has been that, and uh, just uh, you know, anointing other leagues. And, and uh, I don't feel as much now, though. I mean, I think uh, the Big 12's had a lot of great wins in the last several years, and you know, even a lot of teams that you know maybe had been at the bottom of our conference for a while, um, you know, have, have made some major moves. I mean, look, I've used Iowa State as a great example, I think, for a while, and the job. Those guys have done up there. Obviously, Kansas went and had a huge win on the road against BC. I mean, we're, you know, we got a lot of good teams, we've got a lot of good players, a lot of good coaches in this league. So that's, and again, just having been through it and had the chance to win it, you know, a couple of times, it's, I, I just, I know how hard it's been. And so uh, it's, there, it's just as hard to win this league as there is any of them out there. Kerry Cooks, last question. Kerry Cooks comes back next weekend. Is one yeah. is there is there a concern the defensive guy being on the on the staff over there at Texas Tech and then two? What do you what do you remember most about him? Uh, you know, we we deal with that from week to week. Whether it's a person that's been on our staff or you've known or worked with this guy in the past. I mean, there's so much crossover now that I I mean, it's just it's kind of normal, honestly. Um, uh, Kerry did a great job here. I mean, he's an active recruiter, was a very, very just positive person in our room. Kids really respected the way that he went about his business. And so, uh, yeah, a fun guy to be around, great family. Um, you know, happy, certainly happy landed at a great spot like Tech and, and, and certainly will always be a great friend. All right, thanks, Coach. Thank you, thanks. All right.